We live in a world where humans are the most dominant species on a planet where animals live in abundance amongst each other, amongst nature's glory. Humans have to be packed into larger cities and it's becoming harder and harder to support this life with the energy coming in and the amount of things that people need such as trade to be able to survive and keep economies and countries going as well as being able to grow enough food to support life on the earth. Now what this documentary is going to be going into is the three main bottlenecks of the world and what these bottlenecks mean in terms of trade and surviving. We live in a world where technology, i.e. phones, the latest gadgets and the laptops really support our lifestyles as well as big rigs, radio stations and malls and things like this where we buy things media has become the main way and actually how we live our lives and how food is processed and many other things is done in a technological way now so we've kind of got to a point where we rely on it heavily on things especially like world trade through shipping would this be a bottleneck i don't think so because there's a port in every single country so there'd always be um, world trade coming through whereas the three things that are the bottlenecks would destroy uh, this trade would definitely bring um, problems within the logistics system so what are the three main things the first thing I've noticed is the semiconductor market which you can only buy semiconductors from uh, three countries in the world one of them is China one of them is the Philippines and one of them is Taiwan so Every phone company in the world, i.e. Apple, Huawei, they all go to these three companies to buy semiconductors. One of them is Samsung, uh, the main people behind that. So there'll always be an uh, Americanized Western company that will support the West over the East. So there's always going to be a bottleneck within these factories because to build a semiconductor factory, it costs around about five to ten billion pounds per factory and then they only last up to ten years because they need to be um, such a high standard of producing that only comp big companies like Samsung who already had the technology and the factories could apply and build such things such as semiconductors which we go f I think we produce around about two million semiconductors per day to support the new lifestyle and the what they call the industrial revolution fourth industrial revolution coming in will need a good supply of semiconductors and microchips these are the massive bottlenecks one of them being china the other one being the philippines and obviously you've got taiwan which is owned by china so this is one of the first bottlenecks which i've highlighted as a problem the second problem is always going to be oil you have countries like Iran and the Hummus Straits, it's they call the jugular vein of the world's economy because when things happen there or at the Suez Canal or other bottlenecks of the world, it causes a massive problem on the stock market. Prices go up and down, people start worrying, little things happen. Once these straits or these bottlenecks are open, it's forgotten about and things go back to normal. But these certain areas in the world there's a few areas in the world where these bottlenecks exist uh, with the oil industry it's a real problem because everything relies on oil basically in this uh, modern world that we're living semiconductors like i just said and oil because everything food wise is packaged in oil products it's driven around in oil powered cars it's then taken to distribution places by oil powered cars and then repackaged with oil products and sold alongside other oil based products so we have a major reliance on oil this is why the un's agenda 21 and agenda 2030 and vision 2050 is working towards zero carbon as well as zero oil because we can't keep using the amount of oil that we're using on a daily and i'm not saying that the oil's running out there'll always be enough around in non-proven reserves and proven reserves but that's the problem is net energy is how much oil you can get from the amount of money you've put forward first so if they find a well or they find a big cavern of oil 
what they do is they'll spend say a billion pound on doing appraisal wells and lots of tests around this area to see if it's a proven reserve and then once it's a proven reserve then big oil companies will come in and spend 10 billion on building oil rigs pipelines and um, setting up the infrastructure for these companies and that's before they've even got the oil out of um, the ground or the sea or wherever it's come from so it's a major problem of getting the oil out for a profitable price and that like the semiconductor industry there's only a small amount of companies that are really sourcing uh, the oil i.e shell there's a number of big companies and corporations like that so we have a massive reliance on oil just like we have a massive reliance on the semiconductors now the third thing that i've highlighted as a major bottleneck of the world of the way we live our lives right now and the way it sustains and keeps on going is food chain supplies because the food chain continues to grow rapidly with consumers now expecting exotic fruits fresh on their plates year round such as fish and meats this has extended the supply chain geographically and across more parties making the supply chain longer and more complicated as ever producers manufacturers distributors logistics providers and other parties are under pressure to get their products to market quickly safely and in the best possible condition at a good profitable price that's the major challenge that is coming forward as the population rises and more problems come forth a typical food supply chain chain is made up in six stages sourcing of the raw materials production processing and packaging storage wholesale distribution retail redistribution and to the consumers and then it's eaten by you so if any one of these stages is compromised or it's um, there's problems along the line a variety of issues will arise and the whole supply chain will be in jeopardy and it's always been this problem especially with the mass industry that came sort of in the 70s let's look at some of the issues that the food supply chain managers need to deal with and how they can be fixed and why they get such a high uh, income every year in order to keep the supply chain going is number one is lack of traceability the ability to track food uh, the food product through all stages of the supply chain is now harder and harder which is why they label it and expiry dates and stuff on it like that the second thing is the inability to maintain the safety and quality of products at the same sort of standard because sometimes you'll get big products sometimes you'll get smaller so they try and uh, make it all sort of one level and the same and it can be boring and um, every for instance lemons they're all the same size they're all the same shape there's no difference in them they just look bad um, there's many solutions and things that can help with this but number three is the inadequate communication between parties some companies don't communicate with each other and are just trying to undercut each other which is where problems can arise number four is rising supply chain costs all the time energy and fuel costs logistics and freight manpower investment in new technologies it's always uh, making the food supply chain and the cost at the supermarket rise and number five failure to track and control inventory in warehouses and stores a lot of food just gets left out and lost and it gets wasted I've said many times before around 20 billion land and sea animals are killed every year and only half of those are eaten because a lot of them are left in warehouses and it goes moldy or when it finally does arrive to your plate people who won't eat half of the amount of food that's on their plate this is where waste goes and also like i've just said failure to track and control inventory in warehouses so there's a lot of problems when it comes to the food supply chain and uh, this is another big bottleneck that i've noticed